Hi, I'm Kathy Lincoln, and today at Artistic Artifacts, we are going to embroider tea towels, but we're going to customize them. We're going to add things that are already in our machine to a um, published design. So, this is what we're going to be working on today. This is a wonderful tea towel, and it is just um, very simple. The design is from Stand Tall. It's an OASD design. And in here, you have one applique, uh, pineapple, that allows you space to add your monogram. It is design number seven. Here we go. And so this is what we're going to work on. And while we work on this, I'll talk about other things. I'll talk about the stabilizer, and I will talk about the designs. So, the first thing we have to do is we need to actually um, load up our design. I have it on my USB stick. So on the front of the machine, you will see that you have a machine and you have a USB stick. When you touch the USB stick, then you're allowed to select the things that are on the USB stick. And so I have a bunch of stuff on this stick. But here is my Stand Tall folder. I'm going to let it come up for a minute, and then I'm going to scroll over to design number seven. And I believe that's the right one. Yes, it is. Okay. So I now have my design in my machine. It is selected. What I want to do now, before I do anything else, is I want to go ahead and hoop up my towel. And I'm going to be using Aquamesh um, stabilizer, but if you don't have Aquamesh, you can use Aquamesh Plus as well. All you would do with the Aquamesh Plus is, is to cut it to the right size and peel off the backing, and then stick it to the back of your fabric. So, let me move this out of the way my blank towel. We have these towels, by the way. They are wonderful towels. The thing you have to do with these towels and anything you're going to embroider is you need to pre-wash. You need to pre-wash to have it shrink, whatever little bit it's going to shrink, before you embroider it. Because if you wash it after you embroider it and you haven't washed it before, what will happen is you'll get ripples. You'll get puckers and it won't make you very happy. So, I have my towel and I have pressed it in half so that I have a center mark. Make sure I have yep. So I have a center mark. I'm going to take this is my stable stick template. I have printed it using my V8 software, but if you don't have V8, you can use the free ArtLink 8 software that's available on the Bernina website, Bernina.com. And all it does is it gives me the design with the center point. And that's very important. So you, I don't know if you can see, but I have the crease down the middle here. And I'm going to use this three and a half inch ruler to help me place my template. I'm going to line up the bottom because I want it about three and a half inches up. I don't want it right at the bottom. This is sticky. And then I'm going to take my center line, match it with my pressed center line, and just stick it down. So there it's in place. Now I'm going to take my hoop and make sure you keep the backing paper because you can reuse these templates and you need to put it back on here otherwise it sticks to everything. So I have my outer hoop and I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to give it just a gentle little spritz in the center of 505 to hold my aqua mesh down 
in place so I don't have to worry about it shifting on me. And then I'm going to take both pieces and lay it over my outer hoop. I'm going to sort of manually figure out if I'm somewhat centered. And then I'm going to take my inner hoop and my template. And I'm going to put them together. And I am going to line them up. And in this case, it's more important to have the vertical line lined up than it is to have the horizontal line lined up because I'm going to be able to move the design in the hoop. There we go. I am a little off on my horizontal, but it's okay. I'm going to press this down. I'm going to tighten it up. I'm going to take this template off. I'm going to push it just a hair past so that my project rides on the, the stabilizer and not on the hoop. And I'll make sure it's still tight. And now I'm ready to put it on the machine. But before you do that, the machine has to do its shimmy. So I'm going to be going to my information I, and I'm going to be going to the check. And so it's going to want to do its shimmy first. Now I can put the hoop down. And you're going to want to make sure that you have all the excess towel pulled away. You want to make sure it's not under it. You don't have to rip, want to rip out if you don't have to. Now in check, it's going to let you check the four corners, but I don't want to do that. I want to check the center. So I'm going to touch the center icon, and now I'm going to use my multifunction knobs to move it over and move it down and a little bit that way. And then I'm going to manually move my needle down to see how close I am. I'm almost there. I need to go back and I need to go down. And I need to go a little over. And there I'm spot on. So even though I didn't hoop it up perfectly, I had, I know that it is mostly centered and it's going to be at the right height based on my three and a half inches here. Now it's really important that you take this off because if you forget, you'll be stitching through it. And then I'll put it back on to the backing paper. Because you can reuse these, you want to keep them. Okay. Now I want to add my monogram. So to do that, I'm going to close out of here. I am going to hit this little plus button. And that allows me to go and add something. But I need to add it from the machine. So I'm going to touch the machine. And I'm going to go to my alphabets. And now I, I know which alphabet I want to use, but you have a lot of choices. Let me show you. You have all kinds of choices. But I want to use this one, because I think it's adorable. And I'm going to use the L, because my last name is Lincoln. And I'm going to hit the green check. And now this L is going to be not necessarily where I want it. So now I need to move it. And you can just barely see the pineapple in the background. I am going to move it. Um, I actually can do it here too and I can see what I'm doing. Okay, because I want the X to stay at zero, but I want the Y to come down. And that way I know I'm going to be uh, centered um, in the vertical direction, in the um, horizontal direction. And I just want to eyeball it I actually think I need to move it over just a hair. 
And once you get it to where you like it, what you do is you check the bottom film and see if that meets your expectations. If it does, then you're ready to stitch. And if you feel you need to resize it, um, you can. To do that, you would close, you would follow your breadcrumbs back to the little eye, and you go to the resize. I think I might want it a little bit bigger. So let me say I want it, yeah. Whoops, I, I need to put that back because I have needed just check, select the L to resize. I think that looks good. That's 115%. That's going to be a little bit bigger, and it's going to show up a little bit better. So now I can close out of here, and I can then go to the bottom, and then I can really check to see how I like that. You have a lot of creative um, possibilities using the machine. It lets you do a lot of good things. Now that I'm ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and hit the needle. And it's, what it's going to do, it's going to, the first thing it's going to do, and I've got to speed this up a little bit. Okay, here we go. It is going to give me a placement line so that I know where to put my fabric. I, while we're doing this, I'll talk about thread. This is Polyfast in the top, and I have Deco Bob in the bottom. I'm using a color that matches my background. Now I have my fabric. I'm going to lay it down. And I'm going to start again. And now it's going to give me the, my cutting line. There's two things you can do. You can use a little spray adhesive to hold it in place. You can use a little uh, glue stick. Or you can just make sure that it doesn't pucker. And that's what I'm just doing with my hand, making sure that there are no puckers. Just keep your hand away and your fingers away from the needle because it will go through it. And then in the second pass, it will give you two stitching lines. And that way, when you trim away the excess fabric, if you accidentally cut one of those lines, you don't undo all the work you have just done. Okay, now I am going to take this off the machine because I need to now trim the excess fabric away. And I want to get it as close as I can. In this case, because it's going to get stitched around it multiple times, you don't have to be as careful, but you really do want to get as close as possible because you want that raw edge covered. That's what these wonderful little scissors are good for. They're the, the um, Hobble um, embroidery scissors, and I believe we do have those as well. Okay, it's all trimmed up. It's ready to go back on the machine. Now make sure that you pull the towel, the excess towel away from, and make sure it's not tucked underneath. Because it will want to do that to you. Okay. Now, green flashing light says go. So we have four minutes before I do the next color change. So let me show you some things. So this design called Stand Tall is one of the newer o OESD designs. And there is really a lot of fun designs. This is all thread. 
no applique. And this one is also all thread and no applique. This, this one looks like it's hand stitched. Yeah, I, I like how they have programmed these. Now there's other things you can do in towels. There's a whole new series of wonderful, um, I just love these, they just make me laugh. They're called Honeybee Gnomes. And so I've done a couple of these too. Now these require a, a larger hoop than the large oval. Um, well, most of them do. They, they require at least the midi hoop. And so here is one of them. I just think they're adorable. There is a little fabric in there. The wings are fabric and the, the, the hat is fabric. And then here's another little guy. And I love the shading in the beard. And that's all part of the design. You don't have to think that too, through too much. So you'll see, I also have all my stable stick template kept because I'm gonna make multiple of these. These are wonderful gifts. And these towels, the first time you wash them, they are a little, um, they crinkle up a lot. But when I press them with best press, because I always do that, I wash, dry, and press with best press before I do the embroidery. And then um, the next time I wash these, because these all have been washed twice, they came out beautifully. doing. Okay. Um, I got a, just a bit of that, about a minute before that I have to change my colors. Actually a little bit less because it's almost all the way around. But if you have if you have a towel that is nubby like this, it has texture, you're going to want to put a topper on it before you embroider it. Because you don't want all the threads driven into the towel. Um, I had, I had, had um, done my basting box around it to hold the topper in place before I stitched, and then I did um, the stitching. Now to pull off and this is just tear away. The first thing you have to do is get rid of the the, um, the basting box. And I think you can actually see that better. Well, no, because I used white on the back. Um, so let me um, get my seam ripper. Because everyone should have at least one seam ripper. I have several dozen. Kathy, you have a question about what is best press. Uh, Mary Ellen's best press is a starch substitute. And it's wonderful. You can get it in flavors or you can get it unscented. I prefer the unscented and I tend to buy it by the gallon. So, um, yes, it is, it, it, what it does is it puts the sizing back in, but it's not, um, it's not that stiff, nasty, smelly stuff that you, you get when you buy fabric that has too much sizing in it. Okay, so let me change my thread. done and the next color I have laid them out in order now if you can't remember the order of your threads in the um, the public the pattern instructions there is a, you have for every pattern every design you have the listing of the threads in the order that they're stitched out and what they're stitching and I can show you that so I had a pink placement line I had a pink cut line and tack down and then I had a pink cover stitch and Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. 
the one I wanted was hidden. So we're just going to undo it and put the right one in. Something always goes on these demonstrations. While you're doing that, yes. um, does Bernina have an embroidery only machine? Yes, several. Um, there is an embroidery only, um, the 500, which is the size of the 57590. Then they have an embroidery only 700, which is the same size as this machine with the 790 with all the same functions as the 790. And that's, um, I actually own the 700. I love it. Uh, you, you, what I do is I have um, my embroidery going on my 700 and I'm sewing on my 880. So I can multitask, sort of. <laughs> so I'm just going to, because all I was doing before was the underlay, it wasn't doing the cover stitch yet, so I caught it in time. You know, stuff happens. <laughs> So, you always have this, this chart to follow so that you can figure out um, where you are and what you're doing. And this is going to go for a while, so let me show you how to um, undo. Because the basting stitch is just really big and you can just pull it out. Find the other piece here. I should have done it in the color so you could see it. But I tend to make my basting box the same color as the fabric in case any of it gets left behind. the wrong thing to pull. Okay, there we go. And all this does is just pulls away. There's more basting stitches. And so the, the topper just pulls away. And it's water soluble, so if you don't get all of it, don't worry about it. It's going to go away in the wash. But you want to get most of it pulled off. There's one little big piece there. There we go. So, on this one, because at the time I was working on it, I had run out of plain aqua mesh, but I had aqua mesh plus. So it's just, it's stuck to it, but I can pull it up without any problem. Now this is actually a cutaway, and I'm gonna show you how to safely cut this away because there are things that you can do that will make you unhappy, and I've, ha I've had them happen to me. So I will, Pull this away so that I can actually see the stabilizer without whatever I'm going to, without my background, my towel, and I'm going to cut most of it away. I'm going to leave a little line and I'm going to make sure my hand is there so that I don't accidentally cut the towel because I have done this. And it's very disappointing after you have done all this work than to have realized that you have a hole in your towel. And I'm not gonna worry about the stabilizer that's between the pineapples. I'm just gonna leave it there. Because what I'm gonna do is, and I, and I just do this in, in groups. Um, I take the towels, because I'm usually working on more than one at a time, because when I make gifts, I make them for everybody. 
I take the whole towel, I, all the towels, what, five, six, seven, whatever I'm working on, and I will literally take them and throw them in my washer with a minimal amount of soap on a very short wash. I have a front loader that allows me to just a short wash. It takes about 15 minutes with a double rinse, and that will um, take out whatever soap there. I use a little bit of soap just so that I can take out any adhesive because the water-soluble stabilizer itself will go out with just plain water. But the adhesive needs a little bit of soap to take it out. And so this will just go in, and I will um, wash it. And any of these loose threads for my, um, for my basting box will, will come out. And then it will come out in these nice, soft, soft towels. And you can see this is this is the wrong side, and there is absolutely no stabilizer here. None. It's soft, and there's no more glue or, or sticky in there. So it works very well. Okay. This is going to stitch for a little bit longer. Let me see if I got anything on this. Um, are there other questions? while we wait for the next color change. Is our time up? I think we have an early customer. Okay. Because this, this part is just gonna stitch out just like this. I'm going to change my colors whenever the machine stops and tells me to. I got two more minutes on this color. There's 13 more minutes in the total design because the machine tells me it gives me a lot of really good information. I could speed it up. I have it on fast turtle right now. Um, I generally don't sew on rabbit because um, I like the machine not to shake too much. This is a nice sturdy table, but I also like it to stitch a little slower because I feel the quality of the stitch is better. So if you have more questions, you can call us, you can email us, you can add it in the chat line there and we will um, answer them. And I'll continue making my towel. And we will um, have this up on our YouTube channel um, probably by Monday morning so people can go back and follow it and see it there. So Artistic Artifacts YouTube channel. Super. Okay. I hope you have a great day and I'm going to continue stitching. Take care.